What's up guys, David with Miracle Canine Training. So I wanted to make a video today to talk a little bit about muzzles. And I'm gonna do a deep dive into this topic on our next podcast episode that we're filming. But we'll kind of quickly go over um, you know, some of the reasons why we personally think the Baskerville Ultra is the kind of best uh, all-around muzzle for general day-to-day -day use. Uh, whether it's with working with aggressive dogs, uh, fearful dogs, socializing dogs, introducing dogs to new people, any of those types of things. So um, we had a video go pretty viral recently um, of us socializing a new dog with some fear aggression issues to other dogs. And with that dog, we used this exact muzzle. So this is the Baskerville Ultra Size 5, right? And like I said, this is the brand we generally will use for most dogs. Now in the comment section, per usual, we had many a non-trainer like to put their input in uh, on why this muzzle is such a terrible muzzle to use and why it's so dangerous to use and why it's not a bite-proof muzzle and you need a bite-proof muzzle and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and kind of gave us all their opinions to the moon and back uh, as far as why it's a bad muzzle. So I figured I would make a video kind of dissecting some of those complaints people have about it and explaining why personally I don't find those things to be a major risk. So first off, let's talk about the idea that the Baskerville Ultra is not a bite-proof muzzle. Now to this, I will say that technically speaking, they are correct, right? Obviously, if you look at the design of this muzzle, I could stick my entire hand in there, right? And technically speaking, if I'm sticking my fingers in that muzzle, this is not a bite-proof muzzle. If a dog was really trying to come at me and I didn't have really good awareness of, you know, my appendages, one can wind up in there, you can get bit with it, right? Um, so that is a uh, that is a possibility, right? It is a, a, a valid concern, I suppose, that some people have. Now, my problem is, they make it seem like the the um, the risk involved in you actually getting bitten in with with one of these is like ridiculously high, to which I would uh, strongly discredit. So there's three photos that people have sent me to try to prove this point. Right, first one is this. So this is a picture of a Malinois wearing a muzzle, and he's obviously biting a bite sleeve through that muzzle. Right. So this is the first picture that was sent to me from people that were trying to discredit this muzzle and make it seem like it was a bad muzzle. So let's start off by saying this is not the same muzzle. <laughs> this is this muzzle. And I intentionally went on Amazon and purchased these muzzles so I could show you why this picture does not do justice to this muzzle. So I'll kind of uh, briefly show you this picture. So obviously in this picture, the dog is biting this way, pressing against something and able to clamp down by both the top and the bottom of this. So you can see with the Baskerville Ultra, I could push that as hard as I want and it is pretty damn secure. You're not getting much give on that. Now let's look at this one. Are you ready? This is kind of funny actually. Now, in the comment section of the person that sent me to these, <clears throat> they said, uh, it's not a bite-proof muzzle, just look at these pictures. And I said, that's not the same muzzle. And they said, it doesn't matter, it's the same material. Again. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even do it without that, right? So, so let's say, Let's first start off by saying, when I say Baskerville muzzle, I do not mean knockoff Baskerville muzzles. I mean the Baskerville Ultra made by Company of Animals. <laughs> because this one is the one that we use, not this one. So we'll take this one, we'll throw that away. Let's move on to the next picture here. This one. Let me know when you got it. Okay, so this muzzle, it's obviously a lab. He's got two balls in his mouth and he's got a muzzle on his face. Now this one, I can't tell, but I think this one actually is a Baskerville muzzle. But let's look at the way that he's getting the bite through it, right? So the way people say these ones are bite proof are either if your fingers get into it 
or if a committed dog commits and is able to, like you can see, compress the front enough where they can get their jaw around it, right? <clears throat> the way this dog is biting is the muzzle has actually come off and if my mouth is a dog, right? <laughs> Instead of my mouth, or my hand, we'll use my hand. How about that, right? Instead of my hand being the dog, right? And me trying to get that bite through there, which obviously is very, very challenging to do, especially given the fact that I can't compress it, right? It came off and the dog's mouth is like this, right? So obviously with their lower jaw, they're gonna be able to either bite or they're gonna be able to hold an object with it. Now, why would that be the case, right? Well, the Baskerville Ultra, in my opinion, when sized correctly, the other reason why we like to use it is because I believe this is one of the hardest muzzles to get off of a dog, right? So if this is sized properly and you have your back straps tightened up enough where this piece right here can't come up and you have your center strap tightened enough where this piece can't come down, you're not gonna run into that situation. So this is a sizing issue. They have this muzzle size completely wrong. And on top of that, if it is a Baskerville, you'll notice that the center strap, which is a necessary part for safety, is not even attached on this, right? So in this picture, we have a prime example of equipment misuse, right? Handlers misusing the equipment, not sizing it properly, and then trying to get a dog to go play ball with the muzzle on, which that's the second thing that I think is really dumb about these pictures, and you'll see the next one as well, is why are you playing ball with the dog <laughs> with the muzzle on? I just, I just don't understand it, it doesn't make any sense. So we'll take that one, equipment misuse, owner's not using it correctly, it's not sized properly, which is why you're running into those situations. And ironically, I just did a lesson the other day of an owner that purchased a Baskerville muzzle, and they asked me, they said, my dog keeps getting the muzzle off, what am I doing wrong? They didn't have it tight enough, right? It was this back strap, it wasn't snug enough. This piece was over, able to slide over top of their ears, which gets this to lower, which gets them to get their face out of the muzzle. So you gotta size the thing properly. It's no different than if you're using a prong collar, or using an e-collar. It has to fit properly in order for it to work. So the last picture here that I received. Again, we have another chocolate lab, and we have two balls in his mouth, right? This one gets me even more than the last one because, <laughs> because again, first off, why are you playing ball with a dog with a muzzle on? Thing number two, it also has had the center strap removed on it. And <laughs> it clearly is a broken muzzle because it's jerry-rigged with a freaking carabiner. Okay, if you look at these muzzles, you will not find a carabiner anywhere on this muzzle to have it attached. You have a piece that's threaded through this opening right there and secured to it, which again, allows you to size it properly, which allows you to not have it come off and go into the mouth. And this, you can see that slot right there, and then you see a carabiner wrapped around this entire piece, right? Which clearly means they weren't able to get a good fit, and in this case, the muzzle was able to get sideways. So instead of it being like this, like in the other picture, the dog actually had it like this because this back strap wasn't sized properly, right? So those are the three proof that it's really, really easy for dogs to bite through these muzzles. The first one is not even the same muzzle. The second one is misuse of the muzzle, misfitting of the muzzle. The third one is they have a literal broken muzzle on the dog. So obviously your safety is 10 times lower when that happens. <clears throat> All right, let me figure out where I'm gonna go next here. Now, last example, I bought this muzzle off of Amazon as well. This is another knockoff Baskerville. Now this one, material-wise, you can see I could compress this one pretty easily, right? In the grand scheme of this one, which I really cannot, right? So still, not really the same material, but this one is definitely much more secure than this one. But here's the problem with this one, right? So when this one sized properly, you'll notice these muzzles have this slot at 
the bottom, right? Now this slot is for uh, dogs to be able to eat treats through. So if I feed a treat here, the dog can grab the treat through that. In addition to that, it's so their tongue can come out of the muzzle so that they could drink water when they have this muzzle on. That's another big benefit of the Baskerville Ultras is that when they're sized appropriately, the dog should be able to open their mouth and pant with it. They should be able to eat treats with it on and they should be able to drink water with it on, making it more comfortable for longer sustained use of the muzzle, right? The problem is, you'll look at the notch on this one, that's a pretty big slot. If I have my hand in there, if I'm feeding a treat, I do run a pretty big risk that if the dog did want to bite, or if the dog jumped on top of me, obviously I can get a large chunk of my forearm in there. This one is designed where it allows for you to be able to feed treats through it. It allows for it to drink water through it, but notice it has these side notches. So see how much less of my hand gets in there? See how much with my forearm? There's barely any of my forearm actually sticking in the muzzle to put them in a position where they're gonna be able to actually bite me through it. Now I'm not saying it's impossible, right? It's absolutely still possible. My problem is that the risk associated with this in actually landing a bite through this, you have to have a really, really, really committed biting dog in order for you to have any sort of shot of actually getting a bite landed through this, or you have to be really bad with your fingers where you're just willy-nilly throwing them into the muzzle, right? Which, if that's the case, in many cases, you probably shouldn't be working with the dog in the first place. So, um, so that's why we don't like this one, obviously. There are two types of muzzles that are technically speaking, quote unquote, bite proof. And I wanna explain the reasons why I choose not to use those muzzles and I don't necessarily think they're bad muzzles, but I think that just as this has the risk of like a little bit of a bite, obviously, uh, if the dog was extremely committed, I think these have their risks as well, right? So the first one is Ray Allen or Jaffco makes a muzzle that looks like this. Now, this is a pretty good muzzle. I like this muzzle. I've used this muzzle before. My issues with this muzzle are twofold. Issue number one is the way they're designed. The dog cannot drink water with it on and the dog cannot eat treats through it. And in many cases when we're using muzzles outside of say a social with other dogs, we are rewarding along the process. We're giving the dog opportunities to drink muzzle because they're gonna be wearing them for more prolonged periods of time when they're interacting with guests or, you know, again, in socializing, dogs need to be able to drink water at times as well. Um, and I don't like the fact that I don't have that option for it. The second reason for it is the straps on these. It has the center strap, it has the behind the ear strap, but the design of these straps, I don't think you can get it as secure as this one. So if you see this, you'll see the shape of these straps. It has the under the chin part. It's designed to go around and over top of the ear. And you see how it kind of notches back for that. It's away from the muzzle so that you could get it over a longer snouted face and then have this nice and secure so if the dog pulls against it, it doesn't just go flopping off where if it was like this, that's much easier for the dog to get off obviously. Um, and I think you can get it much, much more snug without it like really choking the dog or anything uh, and have it really, really secure with that. I don't think in the case of that muzzle, you're able to do it quite as effectively. And I would much rather be in a position where the probability of me getting bitten is really, really low, really, really low, but still kind of there than the dog being in a position where they could potentially get that muzzle off altogether and then my risk goes through the roof with that dog then at that point. So I don't like it for that reason. So this is the other type of muzzle that was sent to me in the comment section as a quote unquote bite proof muzzle. So it's a metal basket style muzzle. See it? Now with this particular muzzle, I would argue that the bite risk is the same as using a Baskerville type of muzzle. If you look at this basket, I would bet you most people can get their fingers in those slots right there. Again, that's one of the biggest issues with this, but the bite proofness that they talk about generally has more to do with the dog being able to get their mouth out of this section, which we confirmed with the proper fit should not be an issue. I cannot compress that thing. And yes, if a dog tried hard enough, I'm sure if I really press, like I can get that thing to bend like that. But 
with 99% of dogs you're going to work with with aggression issues. They are not going to be that committed where you're going to run that much of a risk with it. But the probability of you getting your fingers in the muzzle, that's a much higher risk that you find when you're working with any sort of aggressive dogs. And with that particular muzzle, again, you see it would be just as easy, in my opinion, to get your fingers into that muzzle. Now, here's my other and arguably more important reason why I do not like that particular muzzle. So with this muzzle, or let's take the dog that, um, the dog that in question that the video kind of started this. We were working with a dog with fear aggression issues, right? And anytime um, another dog would get near this dog and try to sniff this dog, the dog would snap at them to try to make them go away. And I would say that with most aggressive dogs, that's what we're dealing with. Some sort of fear aggression where, yeah, they would bite you given the opportunity, but there's not that much intensity or commitment behind it. They're more so trying to put on a show to get you to go away, and they're not actually trying to come at you and hurt you, um, you know, with the type of intensity that you'll see other dogs do. Given that fact, your risk is going to be less of a bite and more of you getting punched with this muzzle, right? Now this... I could hit myself all day with, right? And it doesn't feel great, but it's <laughs> but it's it's not going to be quite as detrimental as a solid metal basket muzzle like that. I've worked with dogs before. I worked with one dog in particular that was a pretty committed biter that came in on that exact muzzle and he tried to bite me a gazillion times with that thing and because it was a metal muzzle, the impact of the metal hitting me or the impact of that metal hitting another dog is going to cause much, much more chance of injury than this will at that point, right? <clears throat> so we discussed obviously bite proofness, right? Yes, technically speaking, this is not 100% bite proof, but I would argue that that muzzle is not as well. And I would argue that the muzzle that is bite proof, first off, does still have holes in it. And I'm sure you can get a finger into it if you really, really tried. And two, isn't quite as secure as these ones are. Uh, and three, the proof out there that this thing is not bite proof, we've proved is either due to misuse of the muzzle itself, or it's not even the same freaking muzzle in the first place. Uh, and three, from an anecdotal standpoint, we have been using these with dangerous dogs for probably 10 or 11 years now, as do most dog trainers out there that work with dangerous dogs. This is their go-to muzzle, not those other ones. So, um, just keep that in mind as you see some of these comments on stuff. Um, most of these people are not actually working with these types of dogs. Therefore, they're not seeing some of the secondary issues that come with using those other muzzles. And obviously, I was just able to articulate to you guys exactly why I like this particular muzzle. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at with it. Baskerville Ultra, they've been my go-to for a long time. The only time I ever adjust to a different type of muzzle is if we're working with some of the really, really short-snouted dogs, really, really wide-faced dogs, because you don't get as proper of a fit with it. Uh, and we'll do another video at another time where I discuss different muzzles that I use for those types of dogs. But if I can get away with it, 99% of dogs, this is the muzzle of choice for me. So if you guys have any questions on it, obviously leave it in the comments below. Hopefully this video made sense. And uh, my evening rambling after a day of working didn't uh, confuse anybody too much. So that's what I got for you.